How's it going folks? We're back with yet another movie review and this time as you can tell by the clearly very obvious title under the screen we are looking at Aquaman and well I'm just gonna be honest I was really unsure of how this movie was gonna turn out because on one hand it's directed by James Wan and I really like James Wan because you know Furious 7, The Conjuring movies but on the other hand DC haven't exactly had a smooth track record so every time a trailer for this movie came out I was just like Please be good, please be good, please be good. <laughs> but anyway, Aquaman's actually come out now, so without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about it. Aquaman, aka Arthur Curry, played by Jason Momoa, is half human, half Atlantean, and the heir to the throne of Atlantis. However, Atlantis is now under the rule of his brother Orm, played by Patrick Wilson, who wants to unite the other kingdoms of the ocean so they can conquer the surface world. Aquaman teams up with Mera, played by Amber Heard, and with the help of Volko, played by Willem Dafoe, they go on a journey to retrieve the trident of Atlan in order to defeat Ed Warren. Uh, I, I mean, uh, King Orm. I only have two complaints with Aquaman, so I'm just going to get those out of the way before I talk about the other stuff. My first complaint with the movie is the pacing. This is a very fast-paced movie, and sometimes it can feel a little too fast. Some scenes just don't go on for as long as they should. For example, I wish we had more of an exploration of Aquaman's childhood. The stuff we get is good, but because it ends so quickly, it just feels like a fleeting moment that should have been delved into more. The other complaint I have with this movie is Black Manta. Don't get me wrong, Black Manta is amazing in this movie. The actor playing him gives a fantastic performance. I'm sorry, I would try to pronounce his name, but yeah. Black Manta is a really interesting character, and I loved every minute of him in this movie. I just wish this guy was in it more, because he really isn't in this movie that much. He's actually gone for half the movie. Seriously, I need more of him in Aquaman 2, or even Suicide Squad 2. You know, assuming that's still a thing. And now we're on to the pros, and I'm just gonna say it. I freaking loved this movie, and that's something that I don't often say about DC movies. For real, I don't hate DC. I love Batman. I love the Joker. The comics are beyond awesome. Even some of their movies are pretty great. The Dark Knight trilogy, Watchmen, Red, Wonder Woman. But then I remember movies like Green Lantern, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, Batman v Superman, Superman Returns, and Suicide Squad. Point is, DC's movie track record hasn't exactly been smooth. So because of that, it does make me legitimately happy when DC actually makes a good movie. Aquaman is some of the most fun I've had all year. Before this, Aquaman was considered a joke. No one took this character seriously. It's only in more recent comics that this character has become more badass, so I was interested to see how this movie would betray him. The thing I love the most about this movie is how self-aware it is. This movie is one of the silliest and most over-the-top movies I have ever seen, and it knows it. The movie fully embraces the silliness and craziness of the source material, so much so to the point that I couldn't help but smile through the entirety of this movie. Sometimes I just smiled like, ooh, that's nice, but then other times I was just grinning like a crazy person. Then again, I am, you know, kinda crazy. Moving on. Aquaman is knowingly cheesy, and some people might not like that, and I can see where they're coming from. Some superhero movies actually work better with more serious tones. And the Dark Knight trilogy is a perfect example of this. The tone in those movies works so well because it fits with who Batman is. Batman is an extremely dark character who is grounded in realism and most of the time he's a character that's taken really, really seriously. And it almost always works. I don't think you can take a character like Aquaman or even the entire world of Atlantis as seriously as you can with Batman in Gotham City. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm a guy who enjoys watching stuff like Power Rangers. I love cheese, and when the pizza has extra cheese and it's done right, it's a recipe for glory. And Aquaman is extra cheese done right. Aquaman is loud, big, people flex their muscles, shout declarations of valor, and scream at the top of their lungs, and shout their names at the top of their lungs, and do really over-the-top poses. Point is, Aquaman absolutely does not hold back. Some people may think it's dumb and cringy and may even say it's so bad it's good. I would genuinely understand you if you told me that's how you felt about the movie. With that said, my response to that would be to say that the director James Wan wanted this movie to be that way. Dolph Lundgren is in this movie. James Wan would not have cast him if he didn't know what he was doing. May I also remind you that this is the guy that directed Furious 7. He wants this to feel like a cheesy 80s cartoon, something along the lines of Sailor Moon or Thundercats. Heck, even He-Man would be a good comparison at this point. 
And Octopus plays the freaking drums, okay? This guy knew what he was doing. If you're a person who loves cheesy 80s cartoons filled to the brim with yelling, testosterone, macho, muscly stuff, then you will love this movie. I cannot imagine anyone else other than Jason Momoa playing the character of Aquaman. He owns every single second of screen time he has in this movie. You can clearly see that he is loving playing this character and he uses that to his advantage. When an actor loves the character they're playing that much, it helps them sink into the role more naturally, thus you get a performance that feels real, aka exactly what happens here. I like that Aquaman wasn't this perfect guy, he actually loses a lot of battles and that really enforced his growth as a character in this movie because he is a hothead. He goes in thinking, fight first, ask questions later. And a lot of the movie is dedicated to Aquaman learning that that isn't always the way to go. This is the fifth time that Patrick Wilson has worked with James Wan. As some of you may know, he was in the first two Insidious movies and the two Conjuring movies, all of which were directed by James Wan. So they're obviously really good buddies, I guess. Patrick Wilson does a really good job here. He really does make the most of what he has to work with. Yeah, it can't be argued that his motivations as a villain have been done loads of times already, but I know that that's what his character is like in the comics, so it doesn't really bother me that much. Orem aka Ocean Master is definitely at his best as a physical presence. I really felt like this guy could kick the crap out of Aquaman if he wanted to. Amber Heard was really good as Mera. She was the character I was kind of worried about at the start because when she's introduced in Justice League, she is so boring. When I see her in that movie, I don't think, whoa, she's a total badass. I just think, But then I see her in Aquaman, and she's exactly that, a total badass. I got a much better sense of her powers, her personality, likes, dislikes, and just generally a better sense of who she is. The action in this movie is kick ass. James Wan cleverly shoots a lot of the action in these really long, unbroken takes. Granted, some of them could have been multiple takes just edited together to make it look like it was one long, unbroken take, but either way, you can see everything so clearly and get a grasp on the scope of the action sequences. All the underwater stuff as well as an amazing sequence involving Black Manta were definite highlights of the action. The colours that pop up all over the screen are vibrant and gorgeous. I want to live there! If I could name five places from comic book movies I'd want to live in, I'd go Asgard at number five, four would be Xandar, three is definitely Atlantis, two would be Ego the Living Planet, yeah you heard that right, and one would certainly be Wakanda. I mean, I'd be pretty at home in Atlantis with all the fishes, cause you know, Jack Fisher, fishes... <laughs> okay, bad joke, moving on. The characters are all wearing the best costumes I have ever seen in any comic book movie, partly because of how accurate they are to the comics and also because they look really, really dumb, but because they fit within the world that is created in this movie, it gives the costumes both a sense of belonging as well as a sweet slice of nostalgia to go with that extra cheesy pizza. Aquaman is a great movie. I had a ton of fun watching it. It's not the best DC movie and I really don't think anyone should go into this movie thinking it will be because if you do that, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. But it's definitely the most fun DC movie for sure. So with that in mind, Aquaman gets a 9 out of 10. So guys, those are my thoughts on Aquaman. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I really liked Aquaman, I had a blast with it, although I can't understand why someone wouldn't like it because, I mean, cheesy stuff, it's not for everyone, and some people prefer more serious stuff, and I can understand why, I, I'll admit, I love The Dark Knight, but I'll also admit, I love Power Rangers, so in that sense, Aquaman was pretty much instantly enjoyable for me, but what did you guys think of Aquaman? Did you think it was good, did you think it was bad, did you think it was somewhere in the middle? Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you want to. I'm forcing you. Anyway, it's been fun. Bye-bye.